Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be doing something I've wanted to do for quite a long time, and that's make a heating mantle. Now online, heating mantles can be several hundred dollars and very expensive, especially for good quality ones which will reach high temperatures. So today we're going to be trying to make one for just a couple bucks. Now that seems really cheap, and it is. These heating tapes, which can reach up to 700 degrees Celsius, can be bought online at uh, online websites like AliExpress for about a buck fifty. So they're really, really cheap, and that's a buck fifty Canadian. Anyhow, you'll occasionally find them on eBay also, but you'll definitely find them on AliExpress. So these high temperature heating tapes here um, do indeed go up well over 500 degrees Celsius. Um, one of my 500 degree thermometers I used to test out how hot these could actually get and at 240 volts this very quickly went above 500 and my thermometer blew up which was not very good but they definitely go above 500 degrees Celsius which I was very happy with. So these heating tapes are designed to run at 240 volts and that can actually be obtained pretty easily and actually set up a little rig to get 240 volts if you have 120 volts AC in your country and I'll talk more about that later. And even it, at 120 volts, these things will get up to 200, 300 degrees um, Celsius. So, I mean, they're so cheap, I bought five of them, and now we're going to go ahead and produce, well, make a heating mantle. So, we'll need a couple things, I'm going to be using a couple different round bottom flask sizes. We'll start with a 100 milliliter one, and I'm going to be, that's going to be my first heating mantle I'm going to be building, but I'm going to build one for 250 milliliter, 500 milliliter, and 1 liter round bottom flask also. And the nice thing about this is I, well, I kind of have this idea. Um, paint cans, lots of different lids, we'll have to burn the paint off of it first, but lots of different lids from different paint cans will all fit on paint cans because they have a standard size. So, once all the paint's burnt off, this will fit on perfectly, and all these other paint can lids I have in this bag here will also fit on perfectly. So, what we should be able to do is actually cut a hole the, the size of a round bottom flask heating mantle, so that we'll be able to switch out whichever heating mantle we need. You'll, this will become more apparent later on in the video, but I think it, it should be a pretty good design. And yeah, so to start, we're going to need to obtain some small little different dishes, which are roughly the sizes of our different round bottom flasks. And we'll need a heating tape. So I'm going to get a few things set up, and then I'm going to show you how to start wrapping your heating tape up. So I'll get a bit of stuff together, and I'll meet you back. Okay, so to start, obtain a dish, which fits your round bottom flask fairly well. The small little dish here fit the round bottom flask, but just barely. So I had to chop it and widen it a bit so that the heating tape would also fit inside because we do want some wiggle room so that the heating tape can fit around that. I also dented out the bottom a little bit so that the, it sinks down a bit further. Anyhow, I, further, I put I well, allowed a little bit of slide flap here so when we attach it into the lid, um, it'll have something to rest on because we'll later chop out a hole and stick this or chop out a hole there and stick this inside the lid. Um, anyhow, so the next thing to do once we have a container that will fit a round bottom flask fairly well is we're going to be taking our heating tape and you'll see there's the two ends which connect to the power. So we're going to be taking the opposite end which doesn't connect to the power and we're just going to start to try to kind of shape it around a round bottom flask in a coil-like motion and just continue that around trying to get it nice and snug so that it'll fit inside of here and so that we can still pull the round bottom flask out afterwards. Now it's going to be difficult to do this on camera because I'm going to be needing to move around a lot and it's not going to be an easy or faster uh, method to do. So I'll cut back to after I've wrapped that around but when you have wrapped around it looks good we're going to be using some sort of wire to hold it together. So this is just some copper wire and we're going to be wrapping that in and out and you'll see how that looks but that's going to be holding our heating tape together so that um, it doesn't come undone. So I'm going to do that then I'll meet you back. Okay so after shaping everything it, and sticking some wires in and whatnot, you can see we have a nice shape here which perfectly fits our round bottom flask. So this little 100 uh, milliliter round bottom flask heating mantle could actually be used just how it is right now. These would just need to be connected to a power source and then there's your heating mantle. But of course we don't just want to have this thing instantly heat up to 700 degrees Celsius because that would be very um, not well it wouldn't be useful at all. So instead what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a 
container here, I guess, for a heating mantle, which will have a control knob on it so we can vary the temperature and everything, and we'll be able to swap out different sized heating mantles. So, we're going to start by measuring the outside circumference of this um, little heating mantle here, and drilling a very similarly sized hole right here, so that this will be able to sit inside of the paint can lid. Of course, before we do that, um, we will need to take a blowtorch to this paint can lid and burn off any excess paint and labels and whatnot so that it will fit nicely into our... Okay, so my battery just died a moment ago, but I've recharged it, and as I was saying a moment ago, we had to burn out our paint can and stuff so that there's no more paint in it, and then we had to cut a hole in the top of the paint can so that our little container would fit on the inside. And it did all, I did all that while the battery was charging, so now you can see we cut a hole similarly sized to our little container in the paint can, and we burnt off all the paint so it's nice and shiny. Same thing goes with the paint can, nice and shiny and clean, um, so that they fit together nicely when you put them together. Anyhow, so once I'd cut the hole, I then took the little container, put it inside the hole, poked a couple holes in the lid itself, and just secured everything with a little bit of wire. So now everything's nice and secure, it's not coming out, and you can see that our 100 milliliter round bottom flask here fits snugly inside just like that. So that's going to be perfect for when we're needing to heat up something that's 100 milliliters, um, or distill it or whatever. Um, so with this now, we can go ahead and build these in all sorts of different sizes. 250 milliliter round bottom flask, 500 milliliter round bottom flask, and even a liter round bottom flask um, should all work with this. Um, anything bigger than that, and you'll probably what you'll want to do is you'll of course have a bigger bowl that would fit say a 2 liter round bottom flask, and you would have to cut out the ring here, and then glue this outer ring onto the bowl, so that when you put it in, it still fits into the paint can, but the bowl could extend up the sides further. Anyhow, so that's basically, well you can see that it fits in nice and snugly there. It's basically how to build the heating mantle part itself. Now, rather than continue and build the 500 milliliter and all the other different sizes, we're just going to continue with the design for the 100 milliliter size. Um, of course, this could be implemented to any size, as I said earlier. And also, our two leads here, we're going to need to somehow put through the lid so we can attach them to some electrical wiring on the inside, which I'll get to in a moment. And these two extra little tie-off things or whatever will just be chopped off, uh, because we won't be using them. Anyhow, so we're going to be poking or drilling or something two holes in here and feeding these cables through the holes so that they're inside the paint can. You will want to make sure that the edges of the paint can aren't sharp while you drill the holes because if they cut this uh, fiber here, I found that it starts to peel apart and it will um, fall apart very, very quickly. I believe this is glass fiber or something. Um, and it's just kind of woven together. And if these two leads get exposed and are touching in the uh, can here, then of course it will short out and your heating mantle won't work. So I will poke those holes, get that ready, and I'm going to do a bit of modification to the can itself to get ready for the installment of the wiring. So I'll do all that, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I gathered a few materials and made a couple of modifications for the next part. So now we're going to be working on the wiring. So the main thing that we're going to be needing is some sort of method of actually controlling how hot our heating mantle is getting. So I have here a controller from an oven. Now you could probably go down to Home Depot or something and buy a light dimmer switch and it should work exactly the same. But this is actually from a really old oven and it's similar to a light dimmer switch in that it can control how much um, voltage and current is going into whatever it's hooked up to. And that way we will be able to... Uh, change how hot our thing gets. This is actually from an oven that was from the 50s or 60s um, from our family's old beach cabin. They got rid of their oven finally and got a new one and so I took out all the switches. So this thing is quite old but it still works perfectly fine. Anyhow, um, regard if you decide to use an oven switch like I am instead of buying one, um, all oven switches, at least to my knowledge, are the same. I've used a couple different types of oven switches before for different things. So on your oven switch itself, there's going to be some labels beside each of the terminals. Um, on this particular switch, this wire here is L1, and this one is L2, and this one's H1, and this one's H2. And this wire over here is P. Now the P wire doesn't matter, so we can actually chop this one off. 
it's the L1, L2, H1, and H2 that matter. Now on all s controllers I've seen, um, the L1 and the L2 get hooked up to the wall power, and the H1 and the H2 are the two output wires. It's as easy as that. So I'm going to attach these two to the wall power, and of course these two to a heating mantle there. And then I'll chop off this one, just so that no one gets confused about anything. Anyhow, the next thing that we're going to be needing, besides the switch, is actually some way of connecting the the um, heating mantle to our output of our switch. So we have these two um, connections here, which um, which is kind of nice because they actually fit perfectly over top of our little um, our little ends on our thing there. See, they make a nice snug connection, and they pull apart easily. This is useful because as we're trading out our heating mantles, we can simply disconnect and reconnect these little ports here. So I have two of those, um, and that's what we'll be using to connect to our different heating mantles. But if you have little connectors that are a different size than what these are, you can simply chop these off and replace them with appropriately sized um, male adapters to go inside of the female end here. Um, and you could use whatever type of connection you'd like. And if this, you wanted to make this a permanent connection, then you would just solder these wires directly to the switch itself. Anyhow, the last and final thing that we're going to be needing in terms of wiring is some sort of power cord. So we have a three-pronged power cord here. And I've just chopped off the ends there. And we'll be taking the, uh, two, the black and white wire and attaching them to the L1 and L2 of our controller. I'm also going to be taking this green wire here, which is the ground wire, and we're going to be attaching it to the inside of our paint can. This is because if for some reason there was a short, then it will blow the circuit breaker because the whole paint can will be grounded rather than giving us a deadly shock, as this thing will be operating on up to 240 volts, which is a lot of electricity. Anyhow, so with those three parts, um, we're going to start putting this together. There's a hole in the side where I'm going to be putting the extension cord in, and a hole in the front where this controller will come out of. So, we're going to be taking the controller, sticking it in, soldering everything together exactly how I just said, and then I'll meet you back. If I do anything different, then I'll show you. I'll also show you what this looks like after we're done all of that. Oh, and as one side note, um, when you make a hole in the lid to stick these two wires in, what I did was I kind of rounded the edges by taking the uh, a pair of pliers and just kind of pushing the excess metal um, away from the hole itself so the edge is nice and smooth so we don't accidentally cut our wires. Anyhow, I'm going to start working on that and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so it is completed. It took quite a while to do, but I have everything wired together and it's all good. So as you can see, um, round bottom flask still fits perfectly inside of there. And um, our cord has now been attached. And we have our knob at the front here, which can turn if you want to vary the temperature and whatnot, which is perfect. And then we'll take a look at the wiring on the inside here, and you can see how everything connects up. So I do have the little lugs here. I took some, so a bit of heat shrink tubing and put it around so that it's insulated there. And then on the inside here, I did a very similar thing to the um, female adapters here. Put some heat shrink around them so that it's not going to touch the side of the paint can and short out. So, inside further down we have our switch right there, or our turning knob. And this red wire here is actually attached right here on the outside of the bucket. And it's our ground wire. And so the whole bucket's grounded so if there's a short, um, then we're not going to get ourselves killed hopefully. And I just tied a knot in there so that the electrical cord here can't come out. And that's pretty much everything. So um, I'm going to go ahead and no, I'll end the video before I do, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make a couple different uh, sizes of heating mantle here and do the ends exactly the same so that they can all be attached in. And that way, in future videos, when we're in need of actually heating up different sized round bottom flasks, we'll just be able to swap out whatever heating mantle um, we need and just stick it directly in there. So I just tested it out and it heats up actually quite quickly. I'll do a demonstration in just a moment with uh, 120 volts. And I'm also gonna bring out my 240 volt adapter and show you that. Because at 240 volts, this thing will get very, very hot and could easily boil sulfuric acid and many other high boiling solvents and whatnot. 
So, anyhow, I'm going to go ahead, hook this up, get a quick demonstration ready, and we'll just boil some water or something for fun. Anyhow, I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so if you needed 240 volts to power this, you could use a similar device as to what I have here. This is actually quite simple. You take two separate um, extension cords, connect them to each side of here, and you have to connect them to two separate power outlets which are on opposite sides of the breaker. On your breaker, you'll have two sides, and one side controls a whole bunch of switches, and one side controls uh, uh, other amount of switches. So you have to find an electrical outlet which is on each side of the breaker, and then plug two separate extension cords into each of those outlets, wherever they are in your house. This is because one side of the breaker is 120 volts, and the other side is 120 volts. So if you take the hot leads from each of those and combine them, you get 240 volts. So, with this, when you plug it in, the hot lead from the one and the hot lead from the other both lead right here to these two and these two. So across this electrical outlet, you have 240 volts. So upon plugging in our heating mantle into this apparatus right here, we'd have 240 volts powering it and it could reach 700 degrees Celsius. Of course, we're not going to be demonstrating that inside right now because that's a bit dangerous to be doing inside and I'd only be doing it outside, but you will be able to see that in a future video when we distill some sulfuric acid with this. Um, but we'll just boil some water right now. So I have about 50 milliliters of water in a 100 milliliter round bottom flask with a thermometer. And we'll just crank the temperature up to max right away and see how long it takes before it boils. So um, I'll start the timer now and we'll see how long it takes. I'll meet you back in a moment. Okay, so it's been about 15-20 minutes or so, and you can see the water is quite, quite hot. It was uh, boiling just a moment ago. I just turned off the heat because I'm going to be going to bed soon. You can see all the vapor that's condensed up the sides. Uh, if we look at the thermometer here, I don't know if the temperature is going to read or not. See, it's right there, just below the 100 mark. So, it w yeah, this heating mantle is works very well even at 120 volts at 240 volts it heats up very 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 fast um like i said before it blew up one of my thermometers it was a 500 degrees celsius thermometer so i have no doubt that this thing will be able to boil and distill sulfuric acid just fine and everything so i'm very happy with what we've created i'm gonna go ahead and create a whole bunch more and we'll certainly be using these in a future video and you know um i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys later wait bye